All right, thanks for coming back. Folks, today we're going to talk about MS Access Validation. Again, this is module, we just completed modules 1 and 2, and we're on module number 3. And uh, so it's exciting to have you back. Access Validation is the title. We're going to talk about three levels of validation and input mass. So uh, let's get underway. Oh, make sure you check out the blog. I'm going to put some valuable uh, information on the blog about input mass. Okay, because we're going to talk about it briefly here, briefly in this in this video. So uh, the first level of validation is in the uh, is in the table. Okay, anything in the table is going to be available to all the forms or reports you create off the table. So this is your your first line of defense. I want to say it's kind of your well, that's that's where all your data is stored. So that's going to be the uh, kind of the hard the, the the central central operating station. And uh, notice on this on this particular field product ID, we have a, a LL input mask. Okay, input mask LL zero 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 zero. That means that we have two required consonants. And then we have four numeric characters that are mandatory. The L's mean required or mandatory, and the zeros mean numbers that are mandatory. And the upper, this greater than sign, is actually a uh, a sign that says turn everything in uppercase. So now, if I look into data sheet view here, I'm seeing that the Anything I type here is going to be in uppercase. Okay, now let's go ahead and type something else in here just for grins. S D. Notice how I'm, I don't have my caps like he down. Uh, it automatically changes it to uppercase because that's what I told it to do. Six five eight. And if I add a more, notice I get the beeping. Okay, so that's a good way of validation. The other way of validation is on the form. Okay, the form, and uh, when you do anything on the form, it's available only to that form. Okay, now uh, if you, if I put validation on the form, it's available only to this form. Things that are entered on the on the table are available to every form that you produce off that table. Okay, you don't have to go ahead and manually add it. Now I deleted this field, that's why it's telling me a, a name here. So if I go into for if I go into design view, I'm noticing that it doesn't understand what this form is. But if I add a or what that field is, if I add a uh, add this particular field here, notice that it it I didn't have to put any validation, but it already understands. Hey, you put in a, uh, a validation already in the table. Now if I go ahead and add a uh, another field, okay, notice that I'm not getting any, I have to put my own input mass and that's only going to be available to this form. Okay, and um, you can also use one of the presets, okay, this is in the table as well, some of the preset validations, but maybe something that you'll find is not here on the list. Well, then you go to their third level, third level validation, which is the code level. Okay, and code level, uh, we go ahead and let's say you want to validate an email address. Okay, now I have a, yeah, I'm going to validate uh, Eric. Okay, somebody enters in that, they just enter Eric, and it says, please enter a valid email address. Well, okay, well, that's kind of good but my code did work okay Eric at Lobel uh, please enter valid email address because I didn't add the com part of it so dot com this is a valid email address okay and here's the code behind it I'm also gonna put this on the on the blog for y'all to read it and look over it uh, whenever I go ahead and do click the button that says BTN validate, notice I put the 
btn here because it's a command button i have a function here called is email address and then whatever's in that text box i'm saying i'm passing it to the is email address and saying hey is is there an in string here if do i have an at sign okay well if i do do i have a com dot com and if i do it's a valid email address if i don't it's a the email address is false okay in both quest both scenarios I have false and here I'm passing it back to a valid email address and give me a message box so again I'm going to continue onwards in video number two I'm also going to put the information on the blog um, make sure that you can you come on out to vbahowto.com you can see the video the code used in the video be sure to rate or comment in this video if you can and be sure to subscribe to this channel. Thank you so much. Bye-bye.